Good afternoon, friends. I hope that you are having a good day so far. The sun is out for the most part. There's a cardinal perched in the tree out there. Uh, the two dogs are playing, so they might make some noise. Thanks for uh, being patient with me on that one. <laughs> Awful cute, though. Um, to, for today's math lesson, we're going to start by watching a uh, video. It is a multiplication song that I thought was pretty fun. Just helping with fact fluency, so, so speed, um, increasing your speed, improving your speed on multiplication facts. So let's watch this real quick, three minutes long, then we'll get started on today's activities. So obviously that was only <clears throat> a couple, about half of the multiplication facts that we've learned or are going to learn this week. But I wanted to share that with you because there are different ways that you can work on, unfortunately, memorization is a lot of times what we need to lean on to with um, things like addition, subtraction, and multiplication facts. So I wanted to share that resource with you, a tool with you that, you know, if you memorize facts with a song, a fun song, it might stick in your brain better and you might be able to more quickly um, come up with the multiplication problems answer. I know that really helped me when I was in school. And now we do things differently where we show you, we don't only just tell you what it is or what to do, we, t we show you why, which is so important. And really, that would have helped me a lot in math as a kid. So, um, you know, as much as maybe you don't like, what? Uh -oh. As much as maybe you don't like uh, taking it slow in things, I promise you, it will help you tremendously as you continue in your math uh, career. I wanted to remind my friends, I don't have a printer at home, 
Um, I know some of you guys don't either. I know ink's expensive. I'm so sorry the situation that we're in, it, it isn't fair to any of us. Just keep in mind, if, if you need to use scratch paper, <laughs> this is an old college notebook of mine. <laughs> um, just use some scratch paper, line paper. Um, you've seen me before use post-it notes, uh, just little you know, Dollar Tree notebooks that I, I have laying around. Um, whatever you need to use that's going to make it easier on you effort-wise, easy on you budget-wise, do that, okay? You don't need to print everything off and make it all pretty. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, so let's just name share. Let's see. Okay, I don't know why I was saying that the, the share was paused. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my own scratch paper this time. Um, week six math lesson, what we're gonna do with wrapping up multiplication this week and in today's lesson is of course we're going to review and practice our multiplication strategies that I introduced you to last week and that you're practicing um, using again this week. I want you to show you, I want you to show me what you know. So I'm gonna have you do a timed multiplication practice. It's not gonna be timed the way maybe that your parents remember or that I would have remembered. Instead of trying to race the clock and get as many problems done as you can in a minute, two minutes, three minutes, you're just gonna be racing against yourself. And I'll show you what that means later. And then lastly, this is obviously optional, but I did include an array matching game just for fun. And of course that's something that either you'd have to recreate on scratch paper or you probably would have to um, to print it out if you're unable to do that but like I said it's optional I just have it here for you as a resource um, should you want to use it you don't have to use it you don't have to print it out whatever works for you let's um, go over kind of those strategies that you can use to solve a multiplication problem so you can multiply by using pictures. This is an example straight from your, um, your math assignments this week, okay? So you can use a picture to help represent a multiplication problem. So this is two groups with six in it each. Two groups of six. You can use repeated addition. Okay, so um, I don't have the multiplication problem here, but the problem was three times four. I have one, two, three times adding four groups of dogs together. So I've added four three times to figure out that four times three is 12. Of course, you always need a label as well. And then arrays. Arrays is probably the most complex strategy. Just think of it as like um, a base 10 model or um, the, the tens chart that I keep forgetting the actual <laughs> official name of, but um, when you count by tens and it all needs to be lined up so that you can see how much of something you have, that's the way it is with arrays. It also makes me think of like the Connect Four game board, if that's helpful to you, but it's all about uh, columns, so up and down and rows across. They all need to be lined up so that you can easily count. So this is representing six times four. I have six rows and I have four columns. If I added them all up together, I would figure out there's 24. Six times four is 24, okay? So let's review and practice these strategies in um, a couple of examples here. Again, you don't need to cut these out, but if you wanted to, you can make a book. So multiples of one, just kind of, um, again, breaking down that idea of those fact families. So multiples of one would be one, two, and I'll even write this down on my scratch paper so I can show you how you could do it at home. So I'm going to write down multiples of one. One, I'm drawing one block. Two, I'm drawing two blocks. Three, I'm drawing three blocks. Four, I'm drawing four blocks. And five, five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. Easy peasy. 
Didn't take long at all. Use scratch paper. All right, what about multiples of two? Multiples of two. First we start with two. So that's two column or two rows. Then we have oops, four, which is two by two. So we have two rows, two columns. Six, remember skip counting when you're multiplying by twos. So now we have three and three. Sorry, two and three. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and then we have eight. Two rows still because it's still um, a multiple of two in the two family. So now we have two by four. And I'll show you when I'm done. Two, four, six, eight. The last one's going to be ten. Two rows and one, two, three, four, five columns. Multiples of two. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at multiples of three. Again, this might feel so slow to you. You might be frustrated because, I mean, we live in a fast paced world. You're used to going quick, 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 moving on. If you start something as complex as multiplication or division slow and build a really solid foundation like you would want on a house, <clears throat> think about the three little pigs. Would you rather have a straw foundation, a dirt foundation, or a or stick foundation, or a, um, a brick foundation? If you want to be quick and just get it done, you can have a straw foundation, but it's all going to collapse at some point, and you aren't going to understand something. Could, it could be that you don't realize it until seventh grade. could be that you realize it in third grade. Take your time. Go through this with me. Really digest what I'm trying to teach you, the videos I'm providing you with, the resources I'm providing you with, so that you can have that third little pig brick strong foundation so that moving forward in math, you will have a good understanding of the basics. All right, sorry, I went off on another tangent. It's just important. Multiples of three, so this time we're going to have three rows each time. So multiples of three, we obviously start with three. Three rows. Okay, I'm gonna go across this time. Three, six, still have three rows. This time we have two columns. Three times two is six. Three, six, nine. Still got those three rows. This time we have three columns as well. Three, six, nine. Twelve. Still three rows, but this time we have four columns. And you'll see in my pictures, I am not drawing these perfectly. As long as I'm representing those even rows of three and then four across, and I'm recognizing that I, that equals 12, it doesn't need to be perfect. The scratch paper is perfectly fine. Three, six, nine, 12, what comes next? It's three times five, which is gonna give us 15. Two, three, four, five. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Next is. Oh, wait, is that where it's going to have a stop? I bet you it is. I'm just ready to move on. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Yep. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. I have that multiples of three song stuck in my head. So I was ready to keep going. All right. So that's all I'm gonna have you take a look at as far as, you know, representing fact families in a picture form. So this would be a picture representation of, or equal groups of multiples of one, two, and three 
up to five. Um, remember that whatever you're multiplying a number by is called a factor. You multiply two factors to get a product. So if I had three times five equals 15, this would be a factor, this would be a factor, and this would be your product. If you listen to our Lily and Miss Liberty read aloud already today, you heard the word product as far as an economic aspect goes. Girls, stop. <laughs> Getting rowdy. Um, a product is the end result. It's what you end up with. Girls! Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully I can stay focused with you guys. You know I have a, a bad attention span. All right, so let's see if we can identify some arrays. If we need to multiply by one, again, you can write it out on scratch paper or you can print it out, it's fine. You, if you're multiplying by one, it's gonna have one row. If you're multiplying, most likely, they might flip it, but you'll know whether it's got a one row or one column that it's multiplying by one. Um, and then multiply by two. And then we know that that'll have two rows, most likely. Okay. Just made a T chart on my scratch paper because I can't print this out. <clears throat> so let's take a look. These look awful familiar. These look a lot like what we just practiced together. Let's take a look at the first one. Well, there's only one row. So we know that that's going to be a multiple of one. Yes? Next, let's go down. I notice that this has two rows, two, and then one column. This could be, this can go under either. But since it is a row of two, whoop, I know I'm going to multiply that two by one. So I'm going to put this in the column that says one because it says multiply by one. So since it has two rows and one column, I know it's asking us to multiply two by one. Okay. This time I have one row, hint, hint, and one, two, three, four, five columns. One row, we know that we are multiplying by one. <laughs> Just kind of have a real long guy there, that's all right. <laughs> it's a long tail. All right, um, let's take a look at this one. This one reminds me of a window pane. I see that it has two rows and it has two columns. 2 times 2 is 4. I'm multiplying 2 by 2. So that's going to go in on the side of the chart that says multiply by 2. Okay. Next we have one row and two columns. Again, think about the verbiage, think about the wording of the question. What are we multiplying it by? So I have one column but I'm multiplying that one by two, sorry, I have one row, I'm multiplying that row by two columns. So I'm taking the one and I'm multiplying it, I'm adding it two times, I'm multiplying it by two. So that's going to go under the side that's multiply by two. Does that make sense? That verb by is the important wording there telling you where those two should go. All right, next we have two rows. Remember, you're always identifying rows first so that you can start by thinking, okay, this is the number, this is the factor that starts in my multiplication problem. I have two times one, two, three, four columns, two times four. This is a multiple of two.
One, two, three, four. All right, uh, next we have two times, one, two, three, multiple of two. If you have this one and this one flipped, it's still fine. It still represents two times one. It can go in either. I'm not gonna be super, you know me. I'm not gonna be getting um, too worried about that because of the verbiage, okay? As long as you can represent two times one, wherever you put it, I'm going to recognize that you can understand that. Alrighty, so we have two times three on the multiply by two side. We have one row and one, two, three, four columns. Multiplying one four times. I'm gonna kinda try to pick up the pace for you. Um, so I have one row and one, two, three columns. It's a multiple of one. I have one row and one, two, three, four, five, six columns. It's going to go under my multiples of one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alrighty. Second to last, I have two rows and one, two, three, four, five columns. Two by five, two times five. Five is another way to say times. B-U-I, two rows, and what I say, five, one, two, three, four, five columns. We'll go under a multiple of two. And lastly, we have two rows by one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Two by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, it look like this. Okay, see how easily I was able to recreate that on scratch paper, okay? So we were able to sort those. Let's take it a step further, quickly, and write what this multiplication problem is telling me. This is saying one times one. This is saying two times one. This is saying one times five one times four, one times three, and one times six. That's what the multiplication problem would look like that that picture represents, that the equal grouping represents. Let's look at the multiples of two. The first picture that we drew is two rows by two columns. Two times two, that equals four. Next, we have one row by two columns. One times two equals two. Next, we have two rows. I know to write two first. And one, two, three, four columns. I know to write four columns second. Okay. Um, and then I have two rows by three columns, two rows by five columns, and two rows by six columns. And we have completed our sort. Now, I've got kind of like a game for you. This, um, if we were in person in class, would be done as a scavenger hunt around the room. Um, and these would be your task cards and you would have, you know, a scavenger hunt uh, checklist to go off of with a partner. Let's do this together. Um, <laughs> as though we're partners in class, okay? So which multiplica multiplication, multiplication sentence matches this array? I know this is an array not only because it tells me, but because I see equal groups, equal rows, and columns, okay? So let's count how many rows first. I'm gonna switch to another page. because That's gonna tell me what my first factor is in my multiplication sentence, okay? I have one, two, three rows. So I know it's going to be three times something. Let's count how many columns. One, two, three, four columns. 
which matches what we just came up with as our multiplication sentence, A, B, or C? B says three times two. So I'm going to answer B for number one. Okay. Number two, I'm going to go ahead and close the blinds because the dogs are upset about some people playing outside. Trying to get some vitamin D, I can't think right now. Um, vitamin A from the sunlight, but oh well. All right. Number two says, which multiplication sentence matches this array? Now it's not a picture, but just like we did previously on the T-chart that we, um, you know, sorted, this is still, this can still be represented as an array because you have equal rows and columns, okay? So let's first count how many rows. That'll be our first factor. One, two, three, four. Four times, one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Which A, B, or C does our multiplication sentence for number two match? A, A says four times six. Moving on, number three, let's look at this array. We have one, two rows, times one, two, three columns. This is the sentence we came up with. Two times three matches, option C. And number four, okay? Which multiplication sentence matches this array? One, two, three rows. That's our first factor times one, two, three, four, five columns. That's our second factor. A, B, or C, which one matches the answer three times five? B. So far we have B, A, C, B. I'm going to kind of um, take a look forward really quickly. I made this on Sunday or Saturday, so I want to just double check. I think it's all practicing arrays. I'm going to skip ahead and I'm okay um, with you trying the rest on your own, okay? So I'm going to kind of skip around to see what fits our needs best. I think five is a great question. So this time, instead of matching the multiplication problem to the picture, see, where'd it go? Nope, I don't have any of those. That's all right. Um, let's do 23 together. I was thinking that they changed it up. That's all right, it's good practice anyway. Which multiplication sentence does not match the array? So this time we have to take into account that the factors can be switched, flip-flopped, and that doesn't change your product, your answer. So let's first read it how it would be written uh, originally. So we have two rows, so it would be two times one, two, three, four columns. Two and four are our factors. How can I flip those to mean the same thing, but give me the same answer? Instead of saying two times four, I could also say four times two. Four times two would still be two times two by four. It would just, the picture would most likely have four rows and two columns. But if you, if you turn your head, it kind of looks like that, okay? So definitely we're multiplying four and two together is the important thing. So I noticed that A is four times two, so it can't be A. And I noticed that C is two times four. Those are the same factors. It can't be either of those. What about two times two? Do we have two rows and two columns or two columns and two rows? It cannot be B. Two times four will give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do doubling four. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, two times two would look like this. One, two, three, four. It's not the same answer. Okay. Let's do one more of those, 24. Um, 
which sentence does not match the array again. Let's figure this out how we've been taught to read it first. We have one, two, three rows. So your first factor is three times one, two columns. So three times two is what it would originally look like the way we've been taught to write it. Let's flip those factors around. If I flip flopped it, it would no longer say three times two, but it could say two times three. So two times three would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Three times two would be one, two, three, four, five, six. They both equal six, okay? So it's basically when you're flipping them, instead of saying I have three groups of two, you're saying I have two groups of three. That's why it's going to equal the same thing. It's, just, it's gonna be the same number, um, kind of like addition, because this is repeated addition, right? So three times two would work, two times three would work, two times four. So let's think about if we had two groups and two rows and four columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Too much. So C definitely cannot be an option. They would not have the same product. All right, I wanna move forward. I wanna just explain what you're going to be doing here. I want to see what you know. So let's see how fast you can solve these problems. So you're gonna be racing yourself. What you're going to do is you're going to time yourself to see how long it takes you to solve the next page of multiplication problems, okay? So you can use a stopwatch on your phone, you can use it on the computer, you can use, um, if you have like a, a watch, okay? So you're just going to time yourself, okay? A uh, stopwatch, not timer, okay? It says try number one in time. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows and one, two, three columns. You will have 33 problems. See how long it takes you to solve these 33 problems. So let's say that I've started my stopwatch. I'm solving the problem, solving them. Okay, and then I'm stopping. Obviously, you're not going to get this done in 10 seconds. It's fine, perfectly fine. But you would write on time 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, however long it takes you to get it. This is your try number one. Then have either your older sibling, um, your babysitter, your grandma, your mom, your dad, your grandpa, check to make sure that your answers are correct because that's an important part before moving on. Okay, so let's say that your time was 40 seconds. I'm gonna try this a second time and see if I can beat 40 seconds. So this time I'm gonna race again, restarting my, my stopwatch. Wow, this time it only took me 35 seconds. Did I do better this time than before? Yes, 35 seconds. You're just racing yourself. Okay, so just a little challenge for yourself. This last thing I'll quickly just go over um, is, and it's going to overview concepts, especially with arrays, like we did on the task cards, because again, arrays are the probably the most complicated idea in, in the strategies of multiplication in second grade. Um, it's also got the directions and cards for the game. So for example, this is kind of going to explain to you what you already need to know to play this game, which is what we've already been practicing. So you know how we have I can statements at school? It's kind of like that. This is going to tell you the directions. So if you've ever played the memory game, that's kind of what this is. So you would cut these cards out or you can make cards on notebook paper or if you have index cards, little note cards, you could use those. And you would have one side that's blank and that would be the side that sits up. You would set down the side that has the multiplication problem and you would set down the side that has the array on it. So your job would be to mix up those cards so you're not cheating. And you could play with someone, you could play by yourself. Uh, there's many different ways you can play. And you can read more into the directions to figure that out. But um, you'll, tr you'll turn a card over. Maybe it has an array on it. I noticed this array is one, two times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two times nine. 
So that means I'm gonna look for another card that has the multiplication problem that says two times nine or nine times two, okay? So I would flip another card. Oh, I got three times two. I have to flip them both back over and mix them up again. Does that make sense? Um, and then this is what it looks like on Google Classroom. So I just put one example in the math lesson so that you could see what it looks like. But there's all kinds. And of course, credits to the person who made it. Okay, so hopefully this lesson was helpful to you. I felt after looking at assignments from week five and after getting the questions that I um, received about week five assignments, I felt it was important to continue talking about arrays for our final lesson on multiplic multiplication. I'm struggling with that word today, I apologize. Uh, next year in third grade, you will learn much, much more about multiplication. So don't worry if you don't have it all down now. Also, don't forget that, um, you know, you can actually get, I think that I've downloaded some free multiplication fact flashcards. I am going to share that with you on Google Classroom. How's that sound? So I have, I know that at Christmas, I, or during the winter time, I gave you guys um, addition and subtraction flashcards. So this time I'll, I'm pretty sure that I have some that I can share with you if you would like to have those. So, all right. Again, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, and that wraps it up for multiplication. So hopefully the assignment um, will give you a better understanding of uh, fact families one to 10 and a better understanding of how to um, look at arrays and how to um, read them and what they mean and what they stand for. And hopefully now you are able to understand that multiplication is just repeated addition. So adding the same number multiple times. Vocabulary, you need to know factors, products, multiply, multiplication. Um, and then next week, we'll be moving into division, which is kind of the equivalent of subtraction to addition. So division is a bit more complicated. It's more difficult, especially for children to um, get familiar with just like it was when we did subtraction earlier this year. But it's related just like subtraction is to addition, division is to multiplication. So hopefully you've been practicing, you have a better understanding of multiplication so we can move right into division, a quick little preview before you move on from me and go into third grade next year, okay? So we'll just have one quick little week on division, just introducing you to the idea of it. All right, I've talked for way long enough now. Um, I will see you guys at 5 p.m. for our read aloud. I think you'll really like it. It's a pretty fun book. So see you then. Have a great day. Bye.